So July is always when the garden looks awesome, but sometimes you have to be brutal to keep it that way. So today's plan then. We've got some plants that just aren't producing, so they're gone and they'll be replaced. And we've got plants that aren't doing well because of where they are. So we're going to move them in the hope that it'll rejuvenate them. But don't let that give you the impression that things are all doom and gloom in the garden because it is looking awesome and it is producing and we're harvesting lots. I'll tell you all about it. So these are the strawberries that started off life over in the pallet planter against the fence in the chilutery. They did okay that first year. Not brilliant, but it was the first year of bare root strawberries, so they were young plants. We realised that it was difficult to keep them going in the pallet planter. It needed an awful lot of care, so we moved them to the veg truck. Unfortunately, they did absolutely abysmally there because there just wasn't enough light, I think. We got one, no, in fact, we didn't get any strawberries at all. However, we have always had massive success with strawberries in our raised beds. So this was the third year, so I would normally be replacing them after three years anyway. But we moved them into this bed in the hope that we could rejuvenate things and get a good harvest. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. We, we got a few handfuls, nothing to write home about. So I'm going to replace them, but I'm going to take this chance to actually put them somewhere else. I'm not going to have them in this raised bed. Now that is a story for another time and I will tell you all about it because it is going to involve a bit of a move around the garden. But for now I'm just going to get these dug out of here and they will be replaced and I'm going to go back to the original variety that I used to grow which were June bearing strawberries. Um, I'll probably go with El Santa but we'll see what I can get bare root this, this year. So. Now, as I said, it is their third year and I would normally replace these anyway because strawberries tend to produce less and less the older the plants get. So it's not a big deal that I'm actually replacing them. But it is one of those lessons you learn when you're a new gardener and it can seem crazy to be replacing plants. But it is one of the things you learn that if you want to keep things producing really, really well, then this is one of the things you kind of have to do. And as you guys know, nothing goes to waste in our garden. These plants aren't getting binned. They'll go into my compost. And in turn, these will then feed these beds for the next generation of plants. So the bed's empty, it won't be for long, but at the minute I've got a choice. Obviously I've got the straw mulch in the bed that I was using for the strawberries. I can choose to leave it in the bed, but I'm going to be putting seeds in here, so I don't want to have mulch there. Plus, we're getting into a point of the year where I'm not going to need it. I could dig it into the soil and just leave it in there to naturally decompose or compost. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take it all off the bed and I'm going to put it into my compost bin. The reason being, yes, this will be awesome and it will feed the soil when it composts down, but that will take time. Whereas I can put it into my compost bin. It's a hot pile that's going, so this will do the job much, much faster and it will still bring those benefits when I use my compost to then dress all my beds end of autumn, beginning of winter. Either way, it's a win-win for me. My beds will still benefit from this, even though I don't need it right now. So that's what I'm going to do. So plan for this bed then. Um, I'm going to use it for growing greens. So I'm going to try and get my last hurrah with some lettuces, get some spinach, get some mustards going. 
The idea is it's all for the overwinter period. And I'm going to sow some direct seeds and we'll just see how it goes. The idea being that these should come on first, followed by the ones that I sow the seeds for now. Um, because <laughs> we have no lettuce left, folks. We've used up the last of our lettuce that we had and um, it takes quite a while to get them going so they're big enough to harvest. So uh, I missed the boat on keeping that going and I'm going to have to get some more going now. You can see these little guys were all multi-sown in little plug trays. Um, so I have the option. I could thin them out or, as I'm going to do, because <laughs> guaranteed quite a lot of this will get eaten. Any greens I plant in my beds get munched. So I'll let them keep going and then I'll choose the ones that are um, the least munched to be the ones that will then finally be my lettuce. So you guys know I love my gem lettuce and I've got an all year round which is kind of a soft like a butterhead type lettuce and then I've got spinach it's just medania um, it came free with a magazine so I'm just going to use it so let's get this done but label 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 and it gives me the chance to use my swish new labels that I got for my birthday because as you're watching this it's my birthday we're, we're currently celebrating while you're watching So spinach. So let's go just a wee drill to put the seeds in and we'll get the spinach going. There we go. Now I got asked recently how I stop spinach from bolting? And the answer is, I don't. <laughs> Never managed it. I just accept it now, it's one of those things. But it's not so bad that I don't get a decent harvest, so I'm not stressing about it. Spinach. This one can be gem, and this one can be all year. And that leaves me with space for another roll in case I need it. Now this is a lot of lettuce, given there are only two of us in this house, I'm actually growing a lot, but the reason for it is that I won't actually see all of this lettuce. My raised beds get absolutely hammered, any greens I put in get munched. So I'm sown enough for us and for any of the beasties that um, help themselves. So it's just shallow drills that I've put them in. When I sow these in the greenhouse, I actually don't cover them. I put them on the top of the soil. Um, but obviously, if I do that out here, they're just going to get blown away. So, last thing I have to do is give it a good water. But I'll do that last because I want to tell you about some of the other stuff. And of course, I've got a couple of little spares, so I can shove them in one of the empty pockets in the green stock. 
because that's one of the things that has done brilliantly well in the green stock has been the lettuces and again we've eaten them all so I need to get some more going so before I tell you all about the next bit where I'm being a bit brutal let me give you some of the bonuses of what's happening just now because as I mentioned green stock has been fabulous for lettuce just grew so fast, grew so well, we had heaps of harvest. But the other thing that we're harvesting from there at the minute is green beans. I've got a row of green beans going all the way around. In each pocket in there, I've got three plants because I grow dwarf beans, so it's the small plants. So the equivalent of what is in one tier of that green stock used to take up at least half of a raised bed. And I'm getting superb harvest to the point where we're kind of sick of green beans already and it's early for them yet so but yeah so it's going awesome tomatoes are coming they're starting to redden so I've got some dwarf tomato plants in the green stock and they're just getting there now so I'm quite excited and as you can see heaps of other stuff we have strawberries in there and we got loads of strawberries so I'm really pleased because those were first year strawberries as well uh, there's basil there's spring onions um, there is the flowers you can see but we've also got some spinach and some perpetual spinach in there that I sowed from seed and they're just coming on and basically this year for us has just been a big experiment because it's the first year we've used it but so far we're loving it but those aren't the only harvests. Tomatoes. We've had our very first tomatoes from the outdoor plants. Not many, just, just a wee handful. But the first tomato plant outdoors to produce was gold nugget. So lots of those lovely little yellow small fruits. Really excited. My black creme are just starting to colour up. And as you can see, some of the other tomatoes are too. So far so good, there are heaps of fruit on these plants. The greenhouse, I'm not going to lie to you guys, it's getting quite hard going in here because it is so full. There's just no space for me to do anything, so it's quite difficult to keep on top of it all. But, now, I want to just make this clear here. The last few years, I've actually started my tomatoes off in early February, so I was getting lots of early harvest. So having tomatoes now wasn't really a big deal. However, this year I deliberately waited until near the end of March to sow any of those seeds because I wanted to show all you guys who didn't have the option of bringing things on early that it could be done. Just to prove that point, I actually lost almost all of my tomatoes and peppers to damping off. I had a really bad year for it this year. So I had to re-sow all of those seeds in April. April, yeah, mid-April which makes it all the more amazing that I'm already having loads of tomatoes. Now, again, I have got a mix in the greenhouse. I've got lots of tiny dwarf plants, the same ones that I'm growing in the green stock, but the ones in the greenhouse are super producing. I've had bowlfuls of these so far. Not sure if you guys can actually see me or not in the jungle, but um, these little dwarf tomato plants that I've just got in pots on the shelf, just a crazy amount. I'm basically getting this, I don't know if you can see, but like ha three handfuls, four handfuls worth every single day from these guys. I've also got all the standard big plants like the Barry's Crazy Cherry, the Black Crim, I've got Teton de Venus, I've got Kellogg's Breakfast. These are all going in here as well, but I haven't had harvests from those guys yet. It's been the little dwarf plants. I don't think we're far off, but I'm really chuffed. So that's from plants that were sown in April. I'll keep you up to date. Same with the peppers. I haven't harvested any red peppers yet, but I have plenty of peppers on here. So hopefully it won't be long. So I said the strawberries weren't the only thing that were getting a bit of tough love. So I don't know if you noticed straight away or not, but there's been a whole change up here with this bed. July is not the ideal time of year to be moving established plants. In the perfect scenario, I would have moved plants in, say, winter in their dormant period or maybe early spring. But this was a case of necessity. I've got a whole lot of plants that just were struggling, mostly because they were in spots in the garden where they just were not getting enough light. So I chose, rather than risk losing them completely, 
I'll move them somewhere where they'll get much more light in the hope that that will just give them a boost and I might save them. Now it's a bit of a theme, we've had to move and get rid of quite a few plants because we had a lot of larger plants in here that I've now passed, lots of foxgloves and it just looked really unsightly but they were also blocking space and light to all the other little plants that were around. It's very windy, hence we can't really do to camera pieces. We're just trying to tidy up and um, we have little spent things coming out like the old foxgloves. We've got bits and pieces that we can replace them with, including a hundredweight of foxgloves for next year. So we took all of them out and it freed up a lot of space in this bed. Now, I also had some plants that needed to be moved. Gazanias, dahlias, the works. Again, just because they were being crowded out by the light. So I have a mix with my dahlias. I have some dwarf dahlias and some full-sized dahlias. My little dwarf dahlias out front were getting absolutely mugged by Kate's Cosmos hedge, which is absolutely stunning. But for the little plants in there, it just wasn't doing well. So, Kate and I dug any of those out that we could and we dug out all the gazanias that I had planted in there too because they really weren't doing well. And we've now planted them in here. So you can see, it's my tiger striped gazania here that I absolutely love. Speaking of gazanias, my single seed challenge, Tigger, wasn't doing brilliant in the greenhouse. As you, there's not a lot of light in there. So um, we've moved him out and he got planted in this bed too. He's not flowering yet, but... I'm hoping he's going to look like this guy. So things are looking a little bit different here from when I did the June garden tour, mostly because the Cosme are all in flower now. I love these guys, but this year they've caused me a little bit of a problem. There's so many of them and they get so heavy that they tend to fall forward. And I was just too slow in getting them all supported up this year and I haven't managed to keep them back as far as I would like. That means it's shading out a lot of the plants that are underneath, which isn't the end of the world for things like these cosmos because they are big plants that are fighting their way through. But any plants in here that were smaller or not established yet were struggling. So I had a tartan dahlia here beside this glory and he was just looking so awful. He was leaning almost horizontal, trying desperately to get to the light because he was under this guy and he was just getting mugged. So he got dug out and got moved. So he's now here and he's got a stake to try and help him stay upright. He's going to need staked at some point anyway because he's a full-size dahlia. Um, but you can see he's really starting to green up and he's looking amazing. Hopefully, he'll start producing flowers like this soon because this is what he should be like just now, like this guy. And we've rehomed a few little guys into HMS Dahlia as well. So I've got some dahlias. I've got a little yellow dahlia here that I moved from over in Colourful Corner because the petunias were just covering it over. And he's got a gorgeous little flower on him now. There are a few little gazanias in here as well that I don't think are going to come to anything because they are so small. But this guy's now started putting out his flower buds. So I'm really pleased. Honey, can you just turn around for a minute? So don't forget, if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss out anything. And also, give us a little love, give us a little like. Thanks, Dan. Oh, thank you. So maybe I've not been quite as brutal as you guys thought, but sometimes you have to make these tough decisions and give the garden a bit of tough love. But yeah, so this is the July garden then. Hopefully sometime in August, you'll be able to see the fruition of my work. But yeah. Hope that was fun, guys, and I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs>